Hey, it's Norm from Tessa.com. I'm here in New York uh, at the workshop home of Jason Freeney, uh, who's an artist, and uh, you do some really exciting work with toys, uh, vinyl toys, character creation stuff. Uh, people on the internet might have seen your toy dissections. So we, we're here in your workshop to learn a little about your process and what you do. Um, Jason, how did you get started uh, making these toys? Well, it was a combination of uh, a lot of things that I enjoyed uh, doing. I mean, I'm a sculptor at heart. I love toys and I love anatomy. And it's kind of, uh, it all came together. It's, a, I guess, a long story of how the three things came together. Tell me earlier, you, were, you worked you know, in the toy business for a little bit, uh, at a, inventing toy features, uh, but that really wasn't your thing. Well, I, I wasn't very successful at it. I, I, had a, I held a position at a, at a toy company coming up with, uh, with toy features, as you said. I'm more of a looks-like person, so I like uh, to make the toys pretty. Uh, I enjoyed uh, making the storyboards of what the toy does a lot more than I liked coming up with the idea of what it did. So a couple years ago when you first started, you started with illustrations. And one of your first works was taking something like uh, a balloon animal, right. and you had this idea of what would it look like inside. I was, yeah, I was using a, a balloon animal and some illustrations with, uh, with robots, and it was kind of these, these two completely inanimate objects, treating them as living things. Uh, the balloon animal was the pet of the, uh, the robot. That, that's how a robot would see a, right. a creation. So I, 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 I just expanded on it when, as I was working on it, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm treating this like a, a balloon animal. And I, and I think I just wanted to make it kind of as a, a, a simple feature in one of the illustrations where you know, the skeleton would be showing on the, uh, on the balloon animal. One of your first uh, anatomical dissections was like a dunny right. from a kid robot. So a vinyl tour you could just go buy in a store, but then you did something interesting to it. Right. I, the, I mean, it was the, the dunny people and the people that uh, enjoy and do the designer vinyl toys are, you know, they're very passionate about it. Um, and I chose a dunny because you know, what, what got me into the designer toy stuff were dunnies, were keys from Toy 2R. Um, and I knew that the dunny would grab the right attention of the right people, and they would get it. And then from there, you went on to characters that more people might recognize. For example, your, your big Lego f figurine, mm -hmm. um, something like a Hello Kitty. Right. And, and now you're working on things like uh, Mickey Mouse right. and, and, and Sully even. So how does this come to be? A good dissection starts with a good toy. Uh, so, uh, you know, if the toy is vinyl, that helps because usually they are what they call rotocast, which is a mold that has uh, a molten plastic vinyl put in and it's rolled around. It basically means it's hollow. Mm -hmm. So it starts off in a way that I can cut into it already. Sometimes the toys are extremely expensive, yeah. uh, but it's gonna it's gonna be worth it. <laughs> and what's great <laughs> to about make the, the toy look to, to make it look good? The vinyl scene is that they come in all shapes and sizes right. too, right? So you, you can have something like a a four hundred percent size figure or something even bigger. Sure. And then you, you it scales well. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So from there, do you just shove clay in, or? Well, I um, for the small ones, it's usually just clay, like this Mickey is. I'm, he's going to be filled with clay. As they get bigger, the clay is, is expensive and it's heavy. Uh, and it's uh, not it's not a good filler material. So what I'll do is I'll use a two-part um, polyurethane foam. This uh, it's 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 pretty rigid. It's used for uh, boats and pontoons and and things like that. And I'll pop a hole in the character and I will fill it with this foam. It'll, it'll pretty much turn a hollow form into a solid form that's easy to carve into. And then from there, you peel off the section of skin, Correct. right? And then start shaping with internal organs look like. Right. It's it's uh, you know I have my 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 method of doing it. I always you know I start with the ribs first, and you know anybody on my Facebook page that watches, they can almost predict what the next piece is. Uh, it's mostly a logical progression. I can't do the liver until the ribs are in. <laughs> I can't you know. But it's uh, it's it's basically kind of a reverse forensics where I. You know, you, you have to let the form, the shape of the the, of the character, uh, dictate the shape of the skeleton and the and the shape of the organs. And everyone is different. So the skull of a, a Mickey Mouse or the skull of a Lego person, that's something out of your own imagination. 
Right. Well, uh, I, I, I don't know really what it's going to look like before it's done. So, I mean, it's, it's, what I'm saying is it's, you know, the reverse forensics things. I let the shape of the toy tell me how it's supposed to be shaped, you know, where, where the, the bump is, where the cheekbone is, you know, where the eye socket is, how the brow is, you know, where the teeth are placed, the jaw, you know. On this guy, you can see he's got some pretty nasty humpbacking going on here. I mean, his skull sits out here in front of his rib cage. Uh, so, you know, so yes, each one is, is different. And can you talk a little about like the clay you use here? Because if some people, when they want to start sculpting, they use something like Sculpey. And that's easy to work right. with. You can, you can work is on a, it for a while. Sculpey is a fantastic starter uh, clay. Um, it, it doesn't have a lot of durability and longevity, but it, it, it sculpts like butter. It's like, it's, it's very waxy. The tools don't stick to it, um, and it's very forgiving. When I started, it was using Sculpey, uh, but uh, like you know, the durability of it, uh, I put a lot of work into this. They end up getting, they become very pricey. So I want, I want the piece to be very durable. I discovered uh, an epoxy clay, which is a two-part uh, clay where you squish it together, and you've got about a half hour, forty minutes to work with it before it sets and before it sets, and it becomes difficult. To, to sculpt, details are much easier to put in after it starts getting harder. So I try to get the form down while it's soft, and then sometimes I'll have to wait an hour until it gets to just the right hardness, and then I can really start putting in some little fine, fine details in it. But it, it takes seven hours to 24 hours to really harden. In order to get the very smooth surfaces, I do a lot of sanding, and uh, what a lot of people don't understand is sanding is sculpting. Um, so if you saw something before I sanded it, it would look kind of rough, but once I get the sandpaper and I go into it, I can make it look smooth and, you know, I get that look like it's a manufactured toy. I'll sand it down, I'll prime it, then I'll wet sand it, um, which will get it super smooth and take out any, you know, the scratches uh, from the sandpaper. Um, and then I'll prime it again, and then I get into airbrushing it. I'll do. I'll block a lot of things in with airbrushing, but then sometimes the airbrushing gets it gets too detailed for me to get in a mask, so I'll end up having to hand paint it. Wow. So it's it's a combination of airbrushing and hand painting. I like to believe that not only are they a toy on the outside, but they're also a toy on the inside. Uh. So their outsides are vinyl. One would assume that their insides are vinyl, and uh, I, I don't want the anatomy to uh, look so real that it just becomes unbelievable. I like keeping. Uh, a harmony of that toy look, the soft toy look. So what's next for you? Well, I'm having uh, a show coming up uh, in Las Vegas. Um, I want to work on my own characters and, you know, th while they probably won't be, uh, you know, these quarter cut anatomies, there will probably always be an anatomy element to them because I enjoy it so much. I, I like, I like, I really like to look on what's on the inside of things. Uh, as opposed to just what's on the surface. So I like to, you know, my pieces have depth. I like to be able to open things up and look inside and, uh, and things like that. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for inviting us into your home and workshop and giving us a little bit, uh, a taste of how you work, how you build these things. Thank you for coming. And uh, for people who want to see more photos of Jason's work, you have a great Facebook page. Uh, people can subscribe there. And if you want to see more videos of awesome makers and artists uh, like Jason, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're just Tested.com on YouTube. And go to our website, tested.com. I'm Norm, and we'll see you next time.